So hello everyone, I'm Lawrence from Singapore. So it's my pleasure to, to moderate today's session. Uh, we've gone through many times uh, the different, I think, uh, procedures. Uh, this time we will be very fortunate to hear from, uh, I think the case in the same patient, uh, two different conditions requiring two different um, uh, procedures. So I think it, it's going to be a very good learning case, I gather, because um, I think um, on the same patient. So obviously, I think we'll learn a lot from the case. So without further ado, I will call upon Dr. Kazuki to then present our patient with this, um, uh, who underwent two procedures. First, I think the MP and uh, GPOM as well. So Dr. Kazuki, please uh, begin your, your, your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Um, I will be discussing the case involving the patient underwent um, P and G point procedure for the treatment of GERD and idiopathic gastroparesis FD. Uh, before driving into our case study, uh, let's briefly review the history of endoscopic anti-reflux therapy. The initial report on ARMS dated on 2004, when a patient with superficial carcinoma from Barrett's esophagus underwent total circumferential mucosal resection. This led to complete relief of GERD symptom and a normalization of pH study. Based on this experience, Professor Inoue reported on the procedure in 2014 and officially named it anti-reflux mucosectomy arms. However, there are some cases where reflux symptoms persisted even after ARMS. Therefore, we have proposed AMA as a safer and more convenient treatment option for additional therapy. It is a straightforward procedure that has demonstrated its effectiveness and we reported our pilot study in 2020. Both AMA's and AMA's efficacy and safety were confirmed in three systematic reviews and meta-analysis. The validated safety and effectiveness of AMA's and AMA have contributed to the reputation as a reliable therapeutic approach. However, one of these challenges with AMA's and AMA is a necessity to wait for ulcer healing, typically taking three to four weeks. Reported incidence of delayed bleeding stands at approximately 2 to 8 percent and a transient stricture at 12 to 13 percent. To address these limitations, our current approach primarily involved arm P to close a mucosal defect following mucosal resection. This uh, strategy aimed to provide early symptom relief and avoid the risk of post-operative bleeding and a stricture formation. It is important to note that RMP smaller area resection is required, which is about one third circumference. We introduced the concept of RMP in 2023 through the publication of the first reported article on the topic. In the same year, we reported the effectiveness of RMP in a pilot study involving 20 participants. During the study, we also reported that there were no occurrence of post-operative bleeding or transient stenosis. Now I will present a few sample images taken before and after the AMP procedure. You can see that in each case, the hernia itself has become less noticeable. So far, we have performed RMP in 39 patients and completed two months follow-up for each. This table shows the peri and post-operative results. The total operation time was 28 minutes median, and we achieved 100% technical success. As presented in the pilot study involving 20 participants, even with approximately the double the number of patients, we observed no adverse events such as bleeding or stricture. In terms of acid suppressant medication use, 50% patients were able to discontinue their medication entirely, and 18% of the patients were able to reduce their dose by half. In summary, MP was effective in approximately 70% of the patients. 
we have experimented with various closure methods so far, and here I will present some examples. In the past, we have already reported the loop closure method in case involving the large mucosal defect. For the first 20 cases, we primarily used loop 11 as a major closing method. The loop 11 closure method was utilized for the case presentation today. I will later show a more detailed video demonstration. The use of end loop can be considered as the potential closing option. We fix the loop in the place using several clips. Then by slowly closing the end loop like this, we can completely seal the mucosal defect. Here's the video after closure, as you can see that it is completely and securely closed. We have experiments with endoscopic hand suturing for defect closure for an P procedure, which we have reported and published this March. The use of a hand suture is technically challenging and a training is necessary. A suture begin in a clockwise direction, starting from the right side of the defect. The same procedure is repeated, and in this particular case, a total of nine stitches were required to achieve complete closure of the defect. As demonstrated, the defect was successfully and nicely sutured. Recently, we have developed a technique called dead space eliminating technique dead, which involved using anchor prong clip during arm P. We reported this technique earlier this year, and it is currently in press. We uh, developed that technique because in cases involving the large mucosal defect, closing the contralateral mucosa like this would create a dead space. Uh, closure begin by firmly gripping both the mucosa and the submucosa together, shift the clip to the opposite side, and as it reaches the edge, it opened, allowing the submucosa to be grabbed within the defect instead of the opposite mucosa. The initial clip deployed on the defect significantly reduced the size of the large defect. A second clip was deployed from the opposite side of the first clip near the edge of the other side. <clears throat> A third clip anchored from the side of the first clip grabbed the defect. This dead technique was continued in the zigzag pattern ensuring the complete defect closure after without any dead space. <clears throat> this video clip displays the complete closure of the substantial defect in P with anchor prong clip. The follow-up endoscopy two months later showed that the hiatal hernia had narrowed. I will share a technical tip for P. Uh, closing the defect presents a significant technical challenge since anti-reflux procedure is usually performed in the retroflex position. Achieving the optimal angulation is crucial for procedure quality. However, we often face difficulties due to inadequate angulation. When encountering challenges in approaching the cardia, we typically take the following steps. When encountering the difficulty in angulation, we can employ a technique called angle booster. This technique can also be applied in other techniques such as EMR and ESD. For preparation, we gather the endoscopic snare, silk thread, a distal attachment of choice, an electrical tape, and a pair of scissors. First, uh, the tip of snare sheath is secure with the electrical tape. Then the snare is secured at the distal tip using the silk thread. In cases where additional tip bending angulation is required, we slowly and carefully retract and close the snare loop to achieve the desired angulation. Like this. This preparation typically takes less than five minutes. This is an actual demonstration of this technique. At this stage, the angulation is in the fully position. By closing the snare, we can increase the range of angulation, enable it to approach the cardia more effectively. 
with the use of this technique, it becomes possible to approach the cardio more easily. This is actual demonstration. Here, the system endoscopic is making fine adjustment by opening and closing the snare. This enables the primary operator to concentrate on the scope maneuver, which is also one of the advantages. There are no issue with clip deployment, even when using the booster. That was a brief overview of endoscopic anti-reflex therapy. Moving forward, let's delve into the topic of G-point for the treatment of FD, gastroparesis. Gastroparesis involves delayed gastric emptying without physical obstruction, commonly linked to diabetes or idiopathic causes. Management begins conceptually with dietary adjustment, blood sugar control, hydration, and medication to enhance gastric motility. If a more aggressive approach is needed, surgical intervention may be considered. However, a significant advancement came with g point inspired by the POEM procedure. This minimally invasive procedure targets pyrolic dysfunction and has shown promising results in treating resistant gastroparesis. The world's first g point was performed in 2013, marking the milestone in the medical history. Here, our systematic review and meta-analysis of G-POEM showed a clinical success rate about 84%. The most common adverse events associated with G-POEM include bleeding and abdominal pain. In the same study, we can see here that the adverse event rate only at 6.8%. Before proceeding with G-POINT, we conducted a balloon dilation test using a 20mm balloon. This test is really crucial to evaluate the patient's response to the planned procedure. Even temporary improvement in the symptom following the test, even just for one day, would indicate a positive result, indicating a probable benefit from G-POINT. I will provide a brief overview of the procedural technique. G-POEM start with the incision of saline containing indigo carmine. Following this, a mucosal inc incision is uh, made approximately 4 to 6 cm proximal to the pyrus along the greater curvature. Subsequ subsequently, a submucosal tunnel is created to access the pyrus. Following that, we perform selective myotomy on the pyrolytic uh, circular muscle. Finally, the entire site is then fully closed with hemostatic clips. So let's now discuss a case involving the patient who underwent RMP and after that G-point procedure for the treatment of GERD and FD. A 41-year-old old male with PCAB resistant GERD for over three years underwent anti-perendoscopy high resolution esophageal manometry and 24 pH impedance monitoring. High resolution manometry revealed no abnormalities in esophageal motility. 24 hour pH impedance monitoring showed pathological acid reflux as indicated. The upper endoscopy revealed a herniation with a grade A uh, esophagitis, uh, prompting our plan for RMP to address guard treatment. The first step involved that designing the mucosectomy procedure for cardioplasty. We utilize the EMRC2 technique for mucosectomy, which details are con currently impressed in video GIE. The preparation of EMRC2 is straightforward. We use a straight transparent attachment uh, with a distal outer gutter created by the dentist. The snare is then positioned around the gutter side of the patient body. Uh, this video clip demonstrates the positioning of the snare around the gutter outside the patient's body. <clears throat> EMRC2 offer uh, several advantages. Firstly, uh, pre-looping can be easily done at the outer gutter before scope insertion. Secondly, targeted mucosa can be promptly resected following saline injection. Lastly, the resection size is larger compared to the conventional method. 
In this case, our uh, presentation, only three resections were needed to achieve one third of circumferential resection along the lesser curvature. In this case, the loop 11 technique was utilized for defect closure. Uh, first, uh, we begin by the initial clip on the anal side of the wound, <clears throat> ensuring the stable starting point. Then uh, we systematically place additional clips in a zigzag pattern along the edge of the wound Throughout the process, uh, we maintain a uh, gentle traction on the tissue, facilitating the proper alignment and ensuring the effective closure. Uh, this is a video clip from the POD1 of RMP. A follow-up endoscopy two months later showed that the hernia uh, had narrowed. <clears throat> No adverse events uh, such as bleeding or perforation were observed. Following the procedure, improvement in symptomatic score were noted, and even the PCAP was reduced by half. After RMP implementation, our uh, gut symptom improved. However, despite trying the mild laxative and prokaryotic medication for abdominal distension, limited effects were observed. Uh, following the balloon dilation test, symptom improved, occurred for three days following balloon expansion. Based on this clinical presentation and the result of the balloon dilation test, we diagnosed him uh, FD with idiopathic gastroparesis. Consequently, we decided to proceed with G point for treatment. We begin the G-point procedure with a submucosal injection. A solution of indigo carmine and saline is injected to elevate the gastric mucosa. <clears throat> Following the submucosal injection, we make a longitudinal mucosal incision using a TTJ knife. Following the mucosal incision, a submucosal tunnel uh, was created to access the pyrus. Upon reaching the pyrolic muscle bundle, uh, we carry out a selective myotomy of the pyrolic circular muscle. <clears throat> The final step involved closing the mucosa entry point. Hemostatic clip were applied to seal the incision, ensuring no leakage and that the integrity of the gastric wall is maintained post procedure. Uh, pre G poem, our patient faced severe gastroparesis symptom, intense bloating, and frequent nausea. Post G-point, the improvement is remarkable. All symptoms have lessened to either non or mild, indicating a substantial enhancement in the patient's condition. He reported a high level of satisfaction with the treatment outcome, expressing that his satisfaction level was 90% out of 100%, even after one year follow-up. So uh, this is our conclusion. Approximately 23 to 43% of the patient with FD have been found to exhibit abnormal pH monitoring results. For individuals who have undergone endoscopic anti-reflux therapy and continue to experience FD-like symptoms despite medical treatment, and if balloon dilation tests yield positive results, undergoing the G-point procedure may be a consider considered as a potential treatment option. Thank you very much for your kind attention.